Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today's video, tips and tricks on how to keep guppies. Grab a healthy snack and beverage, stand by. Hi right, fishy folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Michael from Michael's Fish Room. I run a small uh, fish room out of my basement. I have about 60 tanks. They're all breeding for profit tanks. I breed uh, guppies and plecos, and I sell them on my website, michaelsfishroom.com. If you've been here before, thank you so much, and welcome back. So today's video, I'm gonna talk about something I know quite a bit about, and that is how to keep guppies alive. Um, you know, I, I do kind of go through the social media posts on the different groups on Facebook and uh, uh, band, and I see many people struggle to keep guppies alive. And I have a few tips and tricks and reasons as to why you may be having some problems. So uh, I do have a list I made on my phone. So if you see me looking down, I'm old and I'm just simply cheating about what I need to talk about to make sure I don't miss anything. So this is in no particular order, although I may tell you one of these things is more important than the, the rest. The order I'm giving them is just the order that I wrote them down in. So um, for me, the number one thing, and this is true, this is the most important thing, is water quality. First of all, you should have uh, you should have good knowledge of the aquarium cycle. If you don't, I have a video I'll put up here for you to take a peek at. Um, and your water should have zero ammonia, zero nitrites, and under 40 nitrates. Also, your pH, and this is pretty important, should be 7.2 or higher. Now, as with all the videos that I do, this information comes from first-hand personal experience working with guppies, uh, breeding for profit for over five years now. And uh, there are things that I see on Facebook that work for other people or see in other videos that may work for other people, and that's okay, but this is what works for me and this is what I have the most experience on. So this is what I'm gonna be talking about. So we have zero ammonia, zero nitrite, uh, under 40 nitrate, a pH of 7.2 or more. You want your GH and KH, in my opinion, over 180, but the harder the water, the better for guppies. Uh, same with pH. They can tolerate certainly lower, but they do best in 7.2 or higher. And even if you go all the way up to 8, that's good for them. Uh, in addition, temperature is very important. A lot of people keep guppies in a tank without a heater, and their ambient temp is, say, 70, 72, so the water is around 72. And while fish can certainly, guppies can certainly survive in that, um, and even reproduce, they do way better in temps, in my opinion, 77 to 79, 80. Anything over 77 is good. Now, here's the thing about guppies and temperature. The higher the temperature, the more babies they're gonna produce, the faster they're gonna grow, uh, maybe even the faster they're gonna swim, but the shorter their lifespan is gonna be. A good healthy guppy should last anywhere between two and three years at the temperature that I said. Lower temperature, they'll probably last longer. Higher temperature, they probably won't last as long because their metabolism speeds up. So that's water quality, and that goes for any fish you're gonna keep. Water quality is paramount. All right, fishy folks, the second thing I wanna talk about is food. Uh, they do make quite a few foods specifically for guppies now. Uh, Hakari makes one, Cobalt makes one, I think a couple other people make one. The thing with fish food is you want variety and as high quality as you can afford. Um, I like certain brands like Northfin, Cobalt, um, frozen food from San Francisco Bay brand. Uh, Ocean Nutrition, San Francisco Bay brand dry food as well. Um, I'll put links down below for the food that I, I like. Um, I talk about food quite a bit in different videos. I'll put links up here as well. But a high quality food and a variety is very important. If you can only afford one food, just make sure it's high quality and it has variety in it. You know, maybe it's a community flake from Northfin that has three different kinds of flake in it. Um, the other thing about food is you want it small for guppies. Guppies only grow maybe two, two and a half inches at best in length. Their mouths are small. 
So a pellet that's 0.5 millimeter may be too big for fry, probably okay for adults. I like uh, fry food. I also like using a pepper mill uh, to grind up bigger pellets. Flake food or pellet or, or live food or frozen, it doesn't matter, it just needs to be small. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about for helping and keeping your guppies alive is getting good stock to begin with. Here's the thing about guppies. Worldwide, they're bred in the billions. And there's a lot of, of uh, farms that keep guppies in poor conditions because they, they produce so many. It doesn't matter if they lose 20% of them to disease or inbreeding. It doesn't matter to them. That's the cost of doing business. But if you get a pair or a trio of guppies from a breeder, a, a local fish store, a big box store, Amazon, not Amazon, eBay or Band, and they die from weak stock, you have no recourse, right? So good stock is something that I can't stress enough. There are plenty of people selling guppies. I would check their reviews before you buy guppies. If you buy guppies on eBay because they're cheaper, there's usually a reason why they're cheaper. Um, it costs money to keep guppies healthy and make guppies that aren't healthy into healthy guppies. Um, there are plenty of people that sell guppies online. To be blatantly honest, if they don't have a website or a brick and mortar store, there's really no way for you to check on their quality of stock. So just, just be mindful of that. Um, how do you know good quality? Reviews, unless you can go to the breeder um, and see his or her stock, or you know, they're a handsome YouTuber that shows you their stock every video, you really can't check on their stock, so you have to you have to rely on reviews. And I do a lot of shopping on Amazon by reviews. So if you're going to shop uh, guppies online, check reviews. It's very important. All right, fishy folks, let's talk about filtration for guppy tanks. Now, the most important thing in a guppy tank, in my opinion, for filtration is the biological media. Where does the beneficial bacteria live? Is there a, a spot? big enough for the colony to grow. Because the thing with guppies is if you have a boy and a girl, you're gonna have more baby guppies than you can, you can handle within a short amount of time if you follow some of my recommendations. Uh, so you wanna have beneficial bacteria or the media for beneficial bacteria that can be expanded. So as we know, beneficial bacteria live on the surfaces of the whole tank, but really inside the filter in the little nooks and crannies of the biological media. Now I love sponge filters for this reason. It is a huge uh, spot for beneficial bacteria to grow. Uh, also, the little mechanical filtration that it adds to the tank, uh, the guppies can graze on whatever sticks to it. Um, and it's not, it doesn't cause a flow issue for those guppies with big tails that may have a, a hard time swimming. Speaking of mom, you definitely want mom in a tank where you're raising guppies because guppies are grazers. They want to eat all the time and they can nibble on, you know, some of the, the natural organisms that live in the mom. So having a pristine guppy tank isn't always the best for their health. I recommend mom in all the tanks. All right, folks, we're almost done here. I have a few more things I want to talk about. One of them is brackish water. Many guppies that you buy uh, imported are grown in brackish water. And the reason is simple. In many other countries, fresh water is expensive. So they take seawater, mix it with fresh water and get brackish water to raise our guppies. Then they're shipped to your wholesaler or your breeder, or your importer, or who, whatever they call themselves, they try to turn them quickly and they die because they're not used to fresh water in your fish tank. They need at least salinity for some period of time until they can get weaned off it. So uh, just be aware of that. If you're buying imported guppies, ask the seller, are they grown in water with salt? Uh, in all my imported guppy tanks, I do add salt up to a certain amount of time. I lower the amount of salt over time so that when I sell them to you, if you put them in fresh water, they will do fine. And that's just something I learned over the years and as I've started importing guppies. All right, fishy folks, the next thing I wanna talk about are additives to the water. And this is gonna be in two parts. Uh, I said before, the, the harder the water, the better. If you don't have water that's naturally hard, 
I would add um, Seachem Equilibrium to bring up the water hardness. You can also put crushed coral in your tank, which will raise the, uh, the hardness as well. Uh, but certainly, if you're having a problem with guppy loss over time, that's the first thing I would look at will be uh, the GH and KH. So that's something that you may want to consider. The other thing which I add to my guppy tanks, um, quite at least once a month, usually once a week if I remember, is this Vitachem. I'll put a link down below. You can get it from my buddy Keith at KG Aquatics or uh, at Amazon or maybe at your local fish store. Um, but it adds vitamins and minerals to the water. It certainly can't hurt. It is a little pricey. I'm not going to lie there, but uh, I go through it a lot because I have 60 tanks. If you buy one of these bottles, uh, it may last you, you know, six months or a year and therefore it's worth it. But I find that, uh, especially if your water doesn't have a lot of minerals on it, this definitely helps. Um, so it's something that I've added to my uh, regimen of keeping guppies in my fish room. All right, the, the last thing I want to talk about as far as additives go are medicines. What should you have in stock and what should you uh, do always? Now, I always recommend quarantining your fish uh, for a two-week period. One, I do one week with meds and I do uh, Furan 2 from API and General Cure from API and ICX from Aquarium Solutions. I am actually... Uh, in the midst of, of working with this fix ick from Fritz. Um, it was given to me to try, so I will be using it the next time I get a shipment in. I'll see what happens. And uh, knock on wood, I've never had an outbreak of ick in my fish room. That's not true. One time I had it and I cured it rather quickly using the ick ick. So I'll be trying the fix ick. By the way, ick is spelled I C K, not I C. Um, the other thing I have in the fish room, I have fish antibiotic. Uh, and triple sulfa. Um, I like the triple sulfa for treating commonaris, which is a big issue with our guppies in the hobby right now. Um, now you might be saying to yourself, but, but Mike, I know you guys love this voice. I love it too. You guys might be saying to yourself, but, but Mike, are you going to treat if you don't see anything? Absolutely. I will almost guarantee you that when you buy fish from either a wholesaler or imported fish that have internal parasites. Now they might not be um, devastated with them and they may last for a while, but I always treat for internal parasites. And my go-to for internal parasites is uh, Levamosol Flake from Everything Aquatic. I, I make nothing from this. This is just me helping you guys and helping uh, Dina from Everything Aquatic. I, I always pay for my food from her because it's worth it. She has Levamisol Flake and Fenbendazole Flake. I like the Levamisol Flake the best. She also has a Quad Flake that I use quite often as well. So uh, that's how I like to treat for internal parasites is using the medicated food. I find that best. I'm just going to check my list, see if there's anything I'm missing. No, I think I got it all. So real quick, let's just do a summary. Good clean water, pH of 7.2 or more, hard water, uh, healthy stock, and good food. And you should have healthy guppies. Now there are certain specifics I did not talk about in this video because this is just a general video. Hopefully you knew people and you experienced fish keepers, have learned something. Uh, if there's a tip or a comment you'd like to make about keeping guppies, please leave them down below. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, fishy folks, the number two thing I want to talk about, and again, no, no. All right, one more thing I want to talk about is additives for, for the water. I gotta get that, hold on. All right, let's talk about filtration now. Uh, in, a, in a guppy tank, you want good filtration, um, bacterial or, or uh, what's it called, chemical? Biological, yeah, yeah.